Good morning, guys. Um, so we've been talking about the golden ratio. We've been talking about getting back into the current. Um, the, the current is where the presence of God is. It's all a play on words. Um, the current is a place where you want to make waves. We haven't been able to do that because we've been laying down dead as martyrs and letting the flow pass over us. Um, we thought it was going to speed up the movement of the current, but we kind of got left behind because we were laying down and we were stuck in a box underneath the current. Um, the golden ratio is uh, what I'm seeing right now currently as the golden rationale, which is a way of thinking that balances um, duality itself. And the key is using the heart um, to understand the emotions, the motion of the current, the motion of the wave. So being able to understand thought through emotion and emotion through thought, it, it's really a perfect balance between left and right brain, good and evil, black and white, male and female, golden rationale. Um, a perfect symmetry of how nature coded, designed the human body and everything else in nature, okay? So I didn't realize that we had another picture of the golden rationale um, that contained a wave. This is supposed to be a wave. It's a tide. It's a current. We've called it point break before. It's a tsunami. Um, and it's all about the golden ratio. Well, what stuck out to me is this symbol. Golden ratio with being in the current moment is where the presence of God is, meaning being in life. Being present in life, that is where the presence of God is. He's not the God of the dead. So he's not back in that spirit realm. He's out in creation. Everything that was made was made with the word. In creation is where God displays his face. Okay. Okay. We talked about how being in the spirit realm was like being addicted to spirits, being addicted to alcohol. Spirits are alcohol. And I saw that in my mind's eye as opiates. And that's because uh, the reference was to Dorothy who laid down in the field of poppies. Poppy, the poppy plant is where opiates come from. Um, but the poppy flower is a huge symbol of Memorial Day. Um, so I felt like we have been living in the memories of what we are and what God is. And what I mean by that, you guys, is we became boxed in to a place that was designed by preconceived principles and ideas. So the idea I was getting was that we were holding on to old memories, which formulated a blueprint, which created our reality. And in that, we were only able to live in the past. And it's because we weren't renewing our mindset. We were not. We were stuck in the idea that God was a spirit. And that is hugely limiting. Hugely limiting. We put God in a box. Scripture says God is a spirit. Okay, let me translate spirit for you. Spirit means essence. Essence is anime, animation. Anime is essence. It's liveliness. It's living. If you have the spirit of life, getting back into life, that is where the true essence, the true spirit is actually becoming 
animated through material form. And that's where God is displaying himself. That's where God is in the material world. So different than what we have been thinking for so long. God is in the spirit realm. God is in here. God is a place that you go and you go speak and feel the spirit back behind the veil. No, God is emerging from the Holy of Holies. We are letting God out into the world. He is coming out out of the coffer, which is the box, which is the chest, which is the coffin, where we put him. Okay? We encaged him. We imprisoned him in thought patterns, principles and ideas and structures that simply do not hold any longer. So Dorothy was going to awake from those memories, Memorial Day, from the opiates, from the poppy, from the spiritual delusion that put her in slumber. Because we went to the land of the sleeping and the land of the dead, we also were reflecting that. That's what we became too, okay? Just spirit mist vapor, which is vanity. Dorothy wakes up from snowflakes. This, of course, is the frozen form of water. What it, it forms this geometric pattern, okay? Where we are coming back to then, guys, is living waters. We were stagnant ponds and cesspools and swamps and Everglades. And trust me, living in Florida, I know what that means, okay? We weren't moving because we were dead. We were, we were decaying, just like the spirits, the skeletons, the flesh fell off of our bones, all kinds of stuff. Okay, guys? We are now coming to the point where we are going to reassemble God, redress God, put him with the correct attire. Though he is bared and plain naked to see, the present God looks like that. <laughs> Whatever is living in the world, okay? That's the presence of God. Okay, so uh, what I started to do, this is, you know, I'm sure you guys have studied this symbol as much as I have. Um, the Star of David. Okay, we've had this star, and here's the six pointed star. Okay, guys? And both of them, um, they're, they're disambiguated in history, meaning they, they're not, they, they can represent the same thing, a five-pointed star and a six-pointed star. They've been many things throughout history, but one of the symbols that this represents is the seal of Solomon and the star of David, of course, the seal of Solomon and the star of David, both stars, five-pointed and six-pointed stars, okay? Okay, to, to me, I feel like right now, this six-pointed star is more a star of completion. It To me, it's representing a diamond. Maybe it's the picture I just showed you. Um, we're going to talk about that sign and what these signs mean. And I love it, guys. This is fun. This is, this is where the magic comes in, and that's what I love about this. And we're going to put a totally different twist on it. I hope you can enjoy it. I hope you can be lighthearted. And I hope the terminology doesn't freak you out. Because becoming the word, you learn to go from A to Z. You learn that all words, like oath, can be a curse. And curse can be a promise. Because it's related by a word that means swear. Anyway, guys. These symbols, we're going to talk about what they actually are and how they've um, developed over through time and through history. So if you go look at the history of the stars, either the five-pointed or particularly the six-pointed star, Star of David represents the Jewish people. Um, it's called the Seal of Solomon. And Solomon is super important to us because it's the end goal. This word right here means Solomon. This word means Solomon. 
Shalom Solomon. Okay. So the seal of Solomon, Solomon was the wisest man. Uh, he's rumored to be the wisest man in history. And that it's going to be part of our golden ratio, you guys, golden rationale, the golden thinking, this balance or ratio or portion proportion that we're looking for. Um, throughout history, mythology has developed Solomon's symbols into this great legend of um, divining, fortune telling, um, wizardry, alchemy, magic, mysticism. So these symbols have become a part of those things throughout history. Solomon being the wisest, the wisest man. There are books and legends about Solomon's wisdom and where it came from and what it means. And again, for our purposes, guys, it's going to boil down to wizardry, uh, witches, fortune tellers, diviners, magic spells, enchantments, and all kinds of wonderful things. How I am seeing this is when we began our journey, guys, what we did is we opened Pandora's box. And this, it's truly us coming into the earth and us becoming the word of God, taking the forbidden fruit to be like God's, okay? Now, the, the word it's the spell. It's the enchantment. Enchantment means to sing at its root. Okay. So anything that we can do with our tongues, with our language, it's what separates man from the rest of creation. The word is so important. It's so pivotal in our journey. A to Z, every book on the library shelf. We've talked about it in a dozen ways. Okay. So these, what we did is we opened Pandora's box when we endeavored to become human, which is actually God in the avatar, in human form. So we were like gods, guys, getting the knowledge of the gods, becoming like gods in human form. And that box opened and it out came demons. You and I opened Pandora's box and out of this box, it was a tomb, out came all kinds of devils, demons, and dark spirits and evil and dead spirits. What we did, you guys, is we evoked the spirits. That's what these signs and symbols do. And look at how I have a notebook full of signs and symbols. They're called sigils. And the greatest one is the six pointed star is how I'm seeing it right now. It's a sign. It's a symbol. It's an amulet. It's a talisman. And that word is all over my symbols. It's all over amulet charms. And what they are is they draw the spirits to you. So we opened this box, Pandora's box, to get the knowledge of the gods. We let all the gods out and they were all dark, evil, dead spirits. Our signs and symbols, which are everywhere on planet earth, every human being uses them in some way, evoked the spirits, okay? To evoke spirits. The act of evoking, calling upon, or summoning a spirit, a demon, a deity, or other supernatural agents. In the Western mystery tradition, conjuration of spirits also refers to a summoning. Do you remember Memorial Day is to ring the bell? Oh, that rings a bell with me. There's a memory in there. M Memorial Day, guys. Ringing the bell is summoning. It's calling the dead 
to life. That's what we were doing, okay? The conjuration of the ghosts or spirits of the dead for the purpose of divination is called necromancy. Comparable practices exist in many religions and magical traditions. What do you think the use of the Holy Spirit is? It's calling on the dead. It's necromancy. And and guys, the only reason I can be so lighthearted about this, and I think it's such a wonderful thing, is because we are getting to the conclusion of these things. What I am telling you right now, these symbols, these signs, these talisman, the telemons, the charms, the amulets that we have used, the stars that we have divined, all of this that we have used for alchemy, alchemy, guys, we are getting to the conclusion. We are getting to the victory. And that's how I can tell you that I was a necromancer. And so are you. If you are using spirits, guys, spirits are dead. Necromancy. That, that's what it is. Now, let me tell you what we did. We let out all these ghosts. We opened the box. We then went out and captured each of them. All these demons that we let out, we went to capture them. And what we actually, it was easy for us because these talismans, these charms and ambulance and signs and stars and divinations were calling them to us. What we were saying is, look, I am a portal. I am a gateway. I am a stargate. Evil spirits come to me. That's exactly what we did. Summoning the spirits. Memorial Day. Ringing the bell. Come to me, spirits. Come to me. Why did we do this? It was our covenant with death. You made it. You made a wager. You bet on yourself. You and your spirit, and we'll get there, said, I want to be like Jesus. Jesus said, can you handle this cup of baptism? You actually think you want to do this. You are being initiated, baptized into the death realm. You are going to go conjure spirits, and they are going to be very attracted to you. And then you have to bring them back into life. So what we did is we took these spirits, we went into the box, we put them back in the box, and in we go with them. While all these charms and amulets are in the jewelry box, at first, you guys, they're stones, they're dead weight. They do nothing but bring you bitterness. Bitterness. Stones mean to calculate. This is why you say lost your marbles. Trust me. Calculus, calculate it. They're stones. They're memory stones, guys. Like the pillars that they used to place in the desert to mark as a signet, as a sign. I have walked this path path before and had an encounter with the gods, with God, with spirits, with the angels of the Lord. So we put all these rocks into the box. They're old bones and old skeletons. They're fossilized, guys. Fossilized bones. We put them into this box and we started counting with them. That's what you do with stones. Remember the the box, the albacus, what's it called, you guys? Help me out. The counter. And you began to count and recount and account. And that's part of the golden ratio, you guys. Okay. And what we're supposed to be doing in that box Now we are letting God back out of the box. We are letting the spirits free. The graves are opening. And how do I know this?
It's because this word, this word, this word right here, this word means resurrection. It mean this symbol means resurrection. A, a tidal wave is resurrection. The root idea is surge, surge. You can think of a surge of electricity, but the root idea of surge before electricity was around is water surging, tidal wave, tsunami, tide, surge, tide. We are now changing the tide, guys, changing the times from the past to the present. Tide, tithe, which is money, which is currency. We are changing the currency. This is, we are resurrecting. The graves, the boxes are opening and the spirits are coming back out. Okay. When you cage the spirits in this box, and they're all stones in there, guys, they are literally wild. Okay, we think that a wild beast roams about in the woods, okay? That is not true. A beast becomes wild when you cage him, and he sits and he goes in circles, and he can't listen to his instinct any longer, and he's fed by the time clock, not by his natural instinct, and he becomes a little stir crazy. That's the strong delusion that the spirits put us in, okay? They were all caged. We were caged with them, and uh, things got a little weird in there, okay? When you open the box, that's when you set the spirits free, and they are free to do what they are supposed to do, and they become tame, they start listening to nature, natural instinct. Oh, I smell this and it means this in the woods. Um, my stomach is grumbling. I can eat by my time clock because I know that I am hungry, not by the keepers, the guards' time clock. Okay? It's when you set them free is when they've actually been wrangled and tamed. It's alchemy. The symbol of the six-pointed star is alchemy. It's a symbol of divining. It's a symbol of transmutation. It's a symbol of alchemy. Alchemy in our victory is going to be the greatest victory of your life ever. It will be you doing what David did and what Solomon did. They took a history, memories, guys, a history of violence, despair, lack, poverty, confusion, and Babylon, captive in Babylon. They took a history of ghosts, of dead ghosts, heavy weight, spirits of oppression, and they transmuted it into victory, glory, wealth, abundance, peace, wisdom. These are the things that David and Solomon were able to do after they had the victory over the necromancy. It, it's the greatest story that was told. It is, it's our greatest story that we have on planet Earth. It's our victory over everything. It, it boils down to uh, the victory over the bad guy, uh, a comeback after failure, um, happiness after grief. It, it's, it's our story. It's evil spirits. We worked with evil and dead spirits. Why? Because we were immature and they reflected us. We went into this box together, you guys, and you started working as an alchemist to transmute these, the philosopher's stone. 
in these stones were base metals, worthless nickel and copper, not so worthless anymore. And you transmute them into gold. You have been, you've done the greatest feat of all time. It's overcoming death. It's now the spirits work for you because you tamed them and wrangled them. The whole idea between behind all of this, it's all in the language, and I just love that part of the story. The word Hebrew itself, look up, not Hebrew, but look up H-E-B-E-R, and you will see that Heber, means fellowship and companion. Who's that, you guys? It's your helpmeet. Who was your helpmeet? It was the story, guys, of the Bible. It was the story of the Hebrews to the Israelites to the Jews. It was all the memory stones in the desert because you were wandering there with them. What they represent, okay, the Jews, and, and the people of the Bible, because you are grafted in you are grafted in. You did it too. This is this is not demonizing. This is not pinpointing anybody. This is mankind's story. They opened Pandora's box. They are a wonderful example of people who went to seek God. What is God? How can I work with God? What are the spirits? How do we do this? They are the first to tell the story of how man is going to overcome the spirits and turn them in the favor of all of mankind now. Where the spirits once worked against us because the forbidden fruit was poison, it is no longer off limits because you've transmuted that poison and turned it into the cure. Heber, a fellowship, a companion, helpmate, your helpmate. This Bible, this book has been your helpmate. What does Hebrew mean? It means the ones from the region beyond. The ones from the region beyond. It means alien. It means stranger. It means alien, guys. It's star people. Star people. Have you been talking to star people? Yes, you have. Because what all of this represents is angels. It's, if you look at it from the signs and the signets and the sigils and the divination, it's all dark arts, black magic. You were able to go into it, guys, work with it, alchemize it, and you are transforming it now. You are gaining the victory over it. It's so hard to do that because normally you get caught on the journey, on the path, you can't fit through the narrow gate. And you stay with your old principles. You stay in Memorial Day. You stay in a place where the spirits remain dead. We are bringing the spirits to life. It, it, it's so profound. It, stars. What are they in Hebrew, guys? Angels. The star people, the aliens that we've seen, that we've spoken about. All evil, all dark, all necromancy. Until now. Until now. With the golden ratio. So as I was looking at this symbol over and over again, the Star of David, <laughs> it's right here. Okay, this is the Star of David broken down. So let me show it to you in a different way.
two X's. One triangle. And the other triangle. This was our score. This means 20. This was our win. This, this was about the kite and how it's turned into a win. The kite turned into a win. What I see in this, you guys, is that it, things are being made new. We're turning the tide, which means turning the season, turning the day, turning the hour. Um, we're going from bitterness, which is Passover, the the uh, period of Passover to sweetness, which is Rosh Hashanah, the fall feasts. And on Rosh Hashanah, they um, they have food too that's not bitter but sweet. So on Passover, you have the bitter food. On Rosh Hashanah, you have the sweet food. I did not remember this until I looked it up, but what they eat, particularly on Rosh Hashanah, is apples with honey. Apples with honey. As you know, my calendar points to Rosh Hashanah. It's the two trumpets for the new moon. This is the moon and this is the sun. On a new moon on Rosh Hashanah, two trumpets are blown, which these are trumpets. Um, the moon is conjunct the sun. They're all together. It's the new year. It, I just feel like we're finally ready for what? The seal, the seal. It's the seal of Solomon. The six pointed star, you guys, is the sigil. It's a sign. It's an ensign. It's an emblem. It's a sigil. It's a seal. There's so much to this. Um, And maybe I'll make that for the next video, okay? Because we're coming up on the season. We always feel this way at this time of year. This year, we have so much greater understanding. I think we've come alive. We've come out of the land of the dead. We've seen it in a different light. We've changed our ratio, our golden rationale about it. And there's a million things coming up. So. I'll see you in the next one.